Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudi, and I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery, and assisted conception at the Homerton Fertility Center. So this week again, there is one fundamental basic paper and another paper which will concentrate on improving clinical sight. So what are we going to talk about today? And what we're going to talk about is what is the impact of clomiphene on the luteal phase after an agonist trigger. And why are we thinking of this? Because slowly and steadily, we've, many of us have started using clomiphene, mainly in, in frozen cycles, and some of, and we have used the extended form of clomiphene in many cases. Now, outside nature and outside ovulation induction, its role in IVF has been back into focus. And a few studies came up and a few studies did indicate that if you get clomiphene, the LH concentrations in the luteal phase would go up. And so what was it postulated? It postulated that probably if you were to give clomiphene in the follicular phase, you would create a high amount of LH and that may have an impact on the luteal phase, thus giving a better luteal phase. So 30 new site donors were taken and the effect of clomiphene in, on LH concentration was studied. 100 mg of clomiphene from day 2 to day 6, a recombinant FSH from day 2 onwards. Gamelalex, an antagonist from daily, uh, started again. And decapeptyl 0.2 mg of trigger and uh, ovum pickup 36 hours later. And what we know is that the LH activity is crucial to support the luteal phase. It maintains a corpus luteum. So a lot of our luteal phase defect are concentrating on the corpus luteum or we are concentrating on the endometrium. So what helps the corpus luteum to survive and its LH-like activity? And its HCG also gives LH-like activity. And I'll keep harping on this in repeated lectures because I think that holds the crux. Triggering the GMRH analog you know, results in decrease of FSH and LH in, in the luteal phase. So your FSH and LH come crashing down uh, and the luteal phase gets disrupted. So what did they do? And they started measuring. So if you look at the protocol, there's one protocol where you used clomiphene and then they used the antagonist from day seven onwards. And the other one, there was only recombinant, which act as a control, and the antagonist, and both had uh, the agonist trigger. And so bloods were taken on cycle day one and two, cycle day five and six, and day of the agonist trigger, 12 hours after trigger, and five days after oocyte retrieval. So when you have a look at the uh, hormonal profile, the FSH concentrations were very comparable. And as soon as you give, and this is one thing you have to remember, already, which is very important, is, is nature will give you a rise of LH and also a rise of FSH. And we believe that FSH in, is needed, at least in some cases, to give a better quality of oocytes. And we've spoken about the triggers uh, in an earlier talk. And here, in both the cases, I, and I think it is more to do with the analog trigger and against trigger and what it has done is it has given you a very high FSH level uh, and at 12 hours after the trigger. The LH concentrations were again not very different from day one to day two but the LH concentrations were significantly higher in the clomiphene group the day after the trigger. And also on the day of and the E2 levels are significantly lower on the day of after trigger in the clomiphene group and also the progesterone levels were very similar. So what are we getting at? We're getting at one is that there is a, a, a rise of LH that takes place and the rise of LH that takes place is due to an, an agonist trigger. That LH rise is very similar exactly five days later so there is 
they did not see an increased LH activity in those where clomiphene was given. And the estrogen levels also come crashing down. So as soon as you give the agonist trigger on its own without HCG, uh, and what tends to happen is you disrupt the luteal phase. And on its own, give it, unless you freeze embryos or unless you're giving some amount of HCG even in an IUI cycle, your success rates are going to be very poor. Now, what you remember is that a luteal phase in IVF is suboptimal. And there's a reason for that. And the reason is that you have a multifollicular growth. And then multifollicular growth gives rise to high amount of steroid concentrations. And these have a negative suppression or feedback on the HPO axis. And that results in suppression of LH. And again, if you're going to have a lot of follicles growing, you're going to keep suppressing the LH. And that suppression of LH, if you do not support the luteal phase, is going to lead to less implantation. Now, if you look at clomiphene, clomiphene will bind to estrogen receptors longer than estrogen. And what does it do then? It, it gives you a higher amount of LH in the luteal phase. And in fact, a higher amount of LH right through the follicular phase. And in fact, in this study, it was also shown because they've done a biopsy, it's shown that those women who had clomiphene saw an endometrial advancement and, and had on an impact of implantation. And probably... That may be one of the causes why pregnancy rates may be lower. Also, those who had clomiphene, in fact, got their period slightly early. Now, on the own, the agonist trigger will give you an early, uh, you know, uh, it will disrupt the luteal phase. But as soon as you add clomiphene too, the luteal phase was further compromised. Now, the plus point of clomiphene, and which you will which you'll see when you use it in a follicular phase, it increases FSH and it increases LH as well as estrogen uh, levels. In fact, it increases LH pulses. And it was thought well, if that may have an impact on the lute luteal phase, and it does not. So giving clomiphene in the follicular phase does not in rescue the luteal phase at all. In fact, if you give clomiphene continuously and giving it from day one to the day of trigger, you are, you are in fact using it as a cheap antagonist and you are suppressing the LH surge. So the conclusion I would say this paper looks at it, it's quite a unique paper because it looks at what does clomiphene do to the endocrine profile and it is not very different in terms of altering the endocrine profile. It does in some cases call endometrial advancement and but it does not really support the luteal phase. So as much as we start using clomiphene and IVF and you have to remember that its luteal phase support is relatively less and unless that is then supported by HCG, you're going to see uh, a negative result. But also you remember is that use HCG cautiously because an agonist trigger almost prevents over hyperstimulation while giving HCG prolongs the stimulation to a very large time and thus complicates matters. And anyway, I, ho I hope you've enjoyed this talk. It's slightly much to the basics. And do like this page and do subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, and if you wanted to download any of his videos, it's much easier to do it from the YouTube. Thank you very much.